CataractCoach.com. Polypseudophagia, that means two IOLs in the same eye. This patient is nanophthalmic, so look how small that eye is. Anterior chamber depth is shallow, axial length less than 16 millimeters. It calls for a more than 50 diopter IOL. Now, I guess certainly here does a good job of placing a trocar here in the pars plana and doing a little bit of an anterior vitrectomy in order to deepen the anterior chamber. Now, I will caution you, in an eye with a 16 millimeter axial length, where's the pars plana? Do you place that trocar two millimeters back, two and a half, three millimeters back, three and a half? How do you know where to place it without actually damaging or puncturing the retina? Complicated question, right? So here, starting off with the rexus. Now, a very tiny eye. Now, the question is, what eye well do you implant? If you look at the lens calculations in this patient, it's somewhere around 50 plus diopters for the eye well for emetropia. Now, obviously, this patient is walking around highly hyperopic, at least plus six, eight, or 10 diopters of hyperopia, maybe even more than that. And so the question is, what eye well do you implant? Now, when we're taking out the crystal lens, the cataract, the cataract's probably four to five millimeters thick. So when we replace that with an IOL, which is, let's say, one millimeter thin, you can certainly put in two IOLs inside the capsule bag, or put one in the bag, one in the sulcus, and you can certainly get that high dioptric power you desire. But the question is, should you? What's the best way? Now, lens calculations in these eyes are tough. And surprisingly, the quiz question here is, in an eye that has a short axial length, let's say like this eye, 16 millimeters, is it easier to do the lens calcs if the patient has a shallow AC or a normal or deep AC? And the answer is, it's easier with a shallow AC. Because if you have a patient like this with a 16 millimeter axial length and a normal or deep anterior chamber, that effective lens position is so far posterior that the Iowa power increases dramatically. So in a case like this, you wish for a shallow AC of let's say one and a half millimeters of depth or less, and then your lens calculations have a little bit more help in being accurate. Now, what do you do here? In the, in the USA, in America, in the, in the United States, the highest eye well power we have is 40.0. And that can be a single piece acrylic monofocal lens. But what if the lens calcs come out more than that? The question is, do you do primary polypseudophagia? Meaning that at the time of the original cataract surgery, do you go ahead and place an eye well in the capsule bag and then maybe place a second lens in the bag or a second lens in the sulcus. And keep in mind, too, that you can have issues of intralenticular opacification, meaning if you have two IOLs, let's say, in the capsule bag, what happens if you get lens epithelial cells growing between the two IOLs in that interface? Well, that's going to be a tough situation. You can't exactly yag that very easily. So do you put one lens in the bag, one in the sulcus? You know, in a case like this, my preference in the USA is to put in the maximum power IOL we have, which is 40.0, put that in the capsule bag, and then stop. And let the patient then recover from the original cataract surgery. Now, certainly there'll be some leftover hyperopia, residual hyperopia, the patient may want to go to contact lenses or glasses for that. And they'll probably be pretty happy. And if you need to, you can always go back and do a secondary surgery. You can do another surgery to put in a secondary IOL of the sulcus. And you can base that secondary IOL on the refraction. And you may have a much more accurate result than doing it as primary polypseudophagia. 
So a beautiful case here. You can see it's been done very nicely. There's a second eye well going inside the eye. Looks like it's in the ciliary sulcus. And this patient is going to have a very nice outcome and do very well. But in the USA, my advice to you is different than this video. My advice is put in a 40 diopter, single piece, monofocal acrylic lens in the capsule bag. And that is FDA approved. You can get that here in the US. And then wait and see how the patient does. And my guess is the patient will be pretty happy already.